Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you believe it's Thursday? And the month of May is already progressing. Before you know, it's June. And before you know, it's going to be Father's Day. Then it's going to be Thanksgiving. And so life, the cycle of life just keeps moving along. I want to just share a few things about what a possibility thinker is about. A possibility thinker. Our whole life with God uh, ought to be based on all things are possible with God for him who believes. All things are possible with God. God thrives on the uh, on a situation or within a situation i should say where there is a possibility thinker a possibility thinker will always think outside of the norm like a normal person will become an unusual person or a usual person becomes unusual a possibility thinker is someone who will dare to think uh, God's way. And God's way of thinking is not our way of thinking. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God's thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. So is God's ways. God's ways they are much higher than our ways. A possibility thinker does not a, a measure him or herself through what they see. What they see, they begin to visualize and imagine way beyond where they are at. For instance, in John chapter 6, there's this big crowd of 5,000 people and a multitude followed and they saw the signs and wonders and so on, so on. And now the Passover of the Jews were close by and Jesus lifted up his eyes, seeing a great multitude coming towards him. And then he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Watch now. But this is said to test Philip. For he himself, that's Jesus himself, knew, <coughs> sorry, Jesus himself knew what he would do. There's the key. Jesus asked a question but in the mind of Jesus he already had a picture he already had something established in how his father was going to handle an impossible situation in the natural and so Philip answered Jesus and says, let me just calculate. Well, let me see. 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient. And uh, uh, he said to Jesus, you know, basically it's going to be so many months of wages. And uh, uh, But one of his disciples, and Andrew, Andrew, he says, there's a little lad here and he's got five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Wow. There's, I mean, there's thousands of people out there. You may have thousands or hundreds of different things pulling on you and you may have so many different commitments or 
desire to break through and inside of you God has placed the mind of Christ which we have to activate by the way and so God is just looking for how much or what you have in your hand God is not looking for the complete solution he just want to find out are you willing can you dare to think beyond what you have available and and this uh, one disciple uh, he brought a lad uh, a little boy's lunch five barley loaves two small fish and he says I don't know how far this thing will go then Jesus said make the people sit down and now there was so much grass in the place and the men sat down 5,000 and Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks there's the key the little that you have what do you have in your hand what do you have in your hand today what do you have in your life that you can say God I'm not sure how far this is going to take me but I know that all things are possible with you father you know and I, I I don't have the complete understanding how this little bit that I have is going to resolve this huge mountain that I have but father there is one thing I do know all things are possible for him who believes and father I believe in you I know that if when you enabled your son Jesus to walk on the water you can cause these five loaves and you know two fish to multiply I just don't know how I don't know how you're going to do it but you see we must not get stuck with the I don't know how we must get stuck with God knows how I'm going to say that again. We must not get stagnant with, uh, I don't know. We must get stuck with God knows. Because God knows far more than what we know. Amen. <clears throat> and so, in this situation, Jesus received the five loaves and two fish. And when he asked the question, where are we going to buy food for all these people? He was comparing a natural way of thinking with a miracle that's about to happen. You might go through this test yourself. The voice might come to you. What do you think? How are you going to get there from here to there? What's going to happen? How are you going to develop this? And that becomes a test because God already has the end in mind from the beginning. God is the beginning and the end. He knows already how this thing is going to work out, but he's waiting for our faith to connect with him. If our faith can just rise up to a level where we say, God, I know that I know that these five loaves and two fish I just have a few things in my hand in my house I just have a few things but if there's one thing I know when I allow these few things that I have my five loaves and two fish to touch your hand when I just bring it into your hand all things are possible for him who believes. And Jesus already had in mind what he was about to do. But the question will still come to you. What do you think? How are we going to resolve the situation? God wants your thoughts. 
he wants to test your way of thinking. And as you think, so you become. God wants to provoke you in a constructive way of saying, well, what do you think, Jill, Mary, Martha, Peter, John, Veronica, I'm using st just strange names. What do you think? What do you think? It's important the way you think. And Jesus said here, and I'm going to read that again, because it is very clear. Uh, but this, John 6 verse 6, but this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. God already knows what he's going to do. But he will throw that question at you. It will come in your mind. What am I going to do? What am I going to do about my situation? Am I just going to be stuck in a rut? Am I going to break up camp and advance forward? I don't know how. When we came to the U.S., my wife and I, uh, I came with four suitcases. Lots of expectation, uncertain, but certain. Just saying, God, help us in that airplane, aircraft. We were crying, having said goodbye to friends, family especially, and to our church people, handed over all our livelihood that we had for 12 years, 12 to 14 years, handed over everything, a Christian school with a hundred students, the thousands that we had in a bank, all the equipment, all, everything we had, we went and laid it down at an apostle's feet and say, here, we, here you are. We're here to serve you because God's plan for us is to go to the USA. We don't know how long it's going to take, but we want to show God we're going to lay down everything. And then it took another three years almost in serving this other man of God, having had your own budget, six, seven staff, 13 people or so in your music, good, strong congregation, strong support, even government support for the school, and laying this all down, not knowing, but yet there was an inside voice, an inward voice that says, everything is going to be all right. And then God already had precious spiritual family aligned up in America that we were going to connect with. There's the key. God is at work on the background whilst we're facing all this stuff. And the one day, I'll never forget, Liz and I went for a walk, and on the sidewalk, we call it pavement, there's this gold watch lying and the arm is set. The watch obviously was broken. The arm was set. You could not adjust the time forward. You could not adjust the time backwards. Nothing. But I picked it up. And I said, this is amazing. And the Spirit of God came upon me and said, now is the time. You cannot adjust the time back. You cannot adjust it forward. Now is the time. It's like God was winking, say. Everything is okay. This is your timing. This is your moment. And everything else came together. And on that aircraft, landing here, going to stay with a precious family for three months, how, uh, Housing us, hosting and housing us. But we knew in our hearts that God was in this. And the rest is history. Bless you, Renee.
And we knew because, you see, God knows way ahead of time. He prepares a table for us in our a wilderness situation. Your mind might be in a wilderness situation. And like my sister there says, Renee, timing is the key. Timing is the key. Timing is everything. And if I just think back, before I'm going to begin to close, when we arrived here, God already had a family prepared to host or house Les and I for three months. Did we go through a rough time? Our furniture, we paid 24,000 bucks there in Africa and the man took the money and other people's money and ran off to Australia. He ran off to Australia. I was so caught up with vision that Liz, my wife, discerned there's something not right here. And she went back. She flew back to Africa. And there's all the different people's furniture, including ours, in, in a warehouse scattered. And we just wanted our photos and just all my, like the Apostle Paul says, all my parchments. That means all my teachings, lesser teachings, and, you know, family photos, and, and a, a dresser. Uh, a bedroom suite that somebody bought in 96 for us in America and then they shipped it across because we used to stay here before uh, shipped it across to South Africa and uh, and uh, we all that was returned back and we still have it in our room <laughs> yes the thing God's timing is the key so after picking up that watch we got back to our apartment and the phone rang. And the owner of the apartment says, I'm so sorry, but I need to give you notice. By the end of January, my son is going to move back here and uh, you folk need to look for another place to stay. Wow, God already had another place ready for us in America. But you see, when, when the timing is right, everything just comes together. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with this. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish because he had a possibility thinker in his midst. If you dare to become a possibility thinker with God, Think outside the routine, the daily routine. It's like the four guys with the paralyzed friend. Imagine this. Jesus having a conference in a, in a house. The house is so filled with people. And the four guys arrive. There's no place to bring their friend. They possibility thinkers. They start to think outside the box. They went up, up on top of the roof. Can you imagine? Digging through the roof. Letting down their friend. And, and the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith. This paralyzed man got healed. Because of four friends. That added value. Four friends that had somebody else's interest at heart. Four friends that abandoned their own self to ensure that they will pour everything they had into their friend and thinking outside the box, possibility thinkers. And because of their faith, the guy in a wheelchair had no faith. But the four friends did. And all we need are those kind of friends. All we need is a little Andrew with five loaves, two fish. And when Jesus gave thanks, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. And as they handed it out, everybody had more than enough. And let me just say this to you. God is very sensitive to what we do with the extras. He did not allow anything to go waste. They came with empty baskets. 
And in this situation, they picked up 12 baskets full of leftovers. Glory to God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Thank you for tuning in today. And thank you for sowing a seed to help this media ministry. This is my personal media ministry. And uh, I appreciate you sowing a seed. There it is. Aim Apostolic Insight Ministries. And mail the check to the uh, PO Box 485. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Go and have a breakthrough day. And remember, you are a, po a possibility thinker. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for tuning in. Go and be a bondage breaker. Go and make things happen today. Don't wait for things to happen. Go and make it happen with your God. Until next time, Jesus is Lord. Bye now.